In today's video, I'm gonna tell you why the elite's goal is not to produce quality, it's to generate wealth. Let's talk about it. to the Most High Yah Shalom. Thank you for tuning in to another Righteous Spiritful episode. Today I'm back at it in them trenches handling that kingdom business. Man, a lot of this stuff that the elites play with when it comes to food and stuff like that, and we know it's been genetically modified and chemically modified, you would say, man, why would they mess with this stuff when they should just leave it in its natural state leave it organic. You know, the term didn't come become organic. You know, the term organic didn't come about until we started realizing that there was so much uh, genetically modified and scientific food and meats and stuff like that. You know, the, the, the term farm raised didn't come about until, you know, uh, snippets of information was released and showing like, man, this stuff, this stuff is raised in factories. These chickens ain't coming from no farm. You know, if you've ever uh, been to El Paso and have driven on I-10, you see how they raise those milk cows right on the outskirts of uh, El Paso, you know? And you realize, oh man, now I see why this stuff is problematic. And the elites, man, their goal is not to produce quality stuff. Their goal is to get as much money as they can from you while you're deceived and thinking that nothing is wrong. Okay. Now I was in the Dodge dealership. I had to leave my pickup truck. I got a Dodge Ram 1500 V6. Okay. And I was in the dealership getting some work done, had to leave it there overnight. And I was talking to the service provider who I've known for a while. And he was telling me, you know, these manufacturers know that these cars have known problems right out of the factory and I asked a question I said if if they make the technicians do all this research on analysis and stuff like this on problematic cars and waste their time doing this why haven't they fixed the issues he looks me dead in my face and said man if these cars didn't have issues you wouldn't be bringing your doggone car in to get all these issues fixed. All of these cars in the parking lot, there wouldn't be all of these cars out here. You know, even behind oil change intervals, I'll tell you this, it is wiser for you to change your oil half of the iteration that they say. If they say you can go 10,000 miles, change your oil at 5,000, I'll tell you why. Because guess what? Everything from the vehicle warranty is calculated. You know, it is not by coincidence that you've, they got a 36,000 mile warranty, three year warranty on your vehicle. It's not by coincidence that your engine goes out at 40,000 miles. And the average person has a five, six, seven year car loan. You got a car payment. And at that moment, they know either you're gonna junk that vehicle or go further in debt, or you're gonna figure out how to way to come up with fifteen, twenty thousand dollars via them credit cards to put an engine in there. You know, uh, we was talking about the the Cummins in the Dodge in the diesel trucks, and I stay. You know, you can go back to the beginning of this channel, man, and I've got a a, a four or five hundred horsepower CRX that I built you know, uh, a turbo CRX. So I've always uh, been mechanically inclined, building engines, working on cars as a mechanic and stuff like that. And that's what I used to do before I joined the army, you know? And I was talking to him about some of the problems that I've been hearing 
that these diesels have is where, if you know anything about an engine, a crankshaft is a very vital uh, component to the bottom end of an engine, okay? And the rods are connected to the crankshaft and the pistons sit on top of the rod. But there is a gear on these Cummins engines that instead of instead of putting a keyway to hold these gears on, these timing gears, these harmonic balancer gears, Dodge has had a problem with these gears heating up and the crankshaft heating up. And if you know anything on how to get something that's rusted on off, you can take a torch and put some heat behind it and it'll come off, it'll loosen it up. Well, Dodge uses pressure fitting gears that don't have a key way to hold them on. So you'll be going down the road holding a load and you know, have engine failure because a pressure fitted gear that is under a lot of pressure, you know, has pretty much come off. And what is the fix? If you go to a good machine shop or a good engine builder, they're gonna tell you that they're gonna machine a keyway in there and machine the gear to where it cannot spin off of the crankshaft freely again. Dodge ain't doing anything to fix this. When you look at uh, some of this stuff to where you're buying these, some of these trucks now, these 2500s, 3500s is $100,000 vehicles. And the emission system that they put on there, you know, the service guy told me, he said, man, uh, we got all these diesels out here. They got emissions problems. So I'm thinking, okay, what's going on with the emissions? And knowing a little bit about the DEF fluid, when you think about diesel emissions fluid and diesel emissions, you know, what they have pretty much done on these vehicles is took like, imagine taking a water hose, an empty water hose, putting one end in your butthole and the other end in your mouth. So every time you fart, you inhaling that same oxygen. That's what, that's what the emissions on a diesel does, you know? And this is a why a lot of your uh, diesel emissions components clog up. And you would say, man, well these elites, they can fix this with tuning. They can fix it with tuning, but okay, if they fix the problem, they wouldn't be part of the solution. That leads me into the Hegelian dialectic. They create a lot of these problems off the rip out of the factory, knowing that that car is a ticking time bomb well before uh, you have it paid off, the average consumer pays it off. And when you look at older vehicles uh, that was built uh, out of metal and all of this, they had Older vehicles, you know, older vehicles are made out of metal uh, and stuff like that. And the parts weren't expensive. Now you got all this fake, uh, this, you know, fiberglass, plastic parts, even in the engine. Even in the engine where you once had a rubber hose, now they got plastic tubes, you know? And I had to get a, a oil cooler replaced. And it was under warranty. But I know that there's an aftermarket metal one out there that eliminates the problem with the oil cooler leaking. But the Dodge dealership, they're only gonna, they're only gonna install uh, OEM Dodge parts. And I said, man, how come y'all don't put the metal oil cooler on there? They said, well, we'll lose out on money. It's the same thing, like, you know, people buying these TVs on Black Friday and you see these 80 inch TVs, $200. What these big box office stores do is they simply go to a TV manufacturer and say, hey, we want this many units and we're able to pay this much per unit. What can you build us? And that manufacturer will build those models that they want. You get this 80 inch TV and you wondering why the Wi-Fi connection don't work on the TV. The goal was never to uh, produce quality. That was never the goal. The goal was to 
uh, make the elite wealthy. It's the same thing. How come this medication that you take and the doctor prescribes you don't work? Well, if you healthy, then your pharmacy ain't gonna make no money. These people making these uh, worthless drugs ain't gonna make no money. The goal was never quality. The goal is to make the elite even wealthier. Think about it. Man, you know, when I grew up as a, as a young mechanic, you know, it was all the cars had an OBD-1, OBD-2, OBD-0 port where you could plug your scan tool and, you know, pretty much evaluate on your own if you are a DIY guy or a do-it-yourself guy and find out what the problem was, go to the parts store uh, and figure it out. Auto manufacturers got even smarter. They said, you know what? We ain't, we ain't, we're not gonna allow nobody to plug in because the con engine control module, we're gonna lock it out to where if you don't have uh, the dealer scan tool, you won't be able to access it and work on your own vehicles. Here's another one. Man, they're pushing for these EV vehicles. These uh, all electronic vehicles, all battery operated vehicles. And one thing about Tesla is there's only so much, you might change your cabin air filter, uh, you know, there's, there's very little that you yourself can do because it's, it's computer based. You're not, you're not, you, there's not too many people, uh, replacing Tesla engines in their garage, replacing, uh, Tesla undercarriage batteries. And they know this stuff is gonna, they'll market this stuff. We got a million mile battery. Think how long it takes to accumulate a million miles and think how long this stuff has undergone testing. So if you didn't undergo testing as long as it takes to accumulate a million miles, you pretty much deceiving the people. You know, the Toyota Tundra, brand new vehicle. You know, uh, these Toyota Toyota Tundras, man, they're reporting engine failure at, at 10 and 15,000 miles. Somebody had a Toyota Tundra with less than 2,000 miles, one of the new ones, and engine failure and they know this and this is the thing now that you didn't got that financing you know uh you're forced to make a decision are you going to try to trade it in take a loss on it you know are you going to roll over to another vehicle finance which a lot of people do and end up upside down you know i don't recommend i would say this i don't recommend anything outside of a uh you know it would be crazy it would be absolutely crazy these days and how they make stuff for anybody to finance a vehicle longer than the vehicle warranty you see what i'm saying if they got a 38,000 mile warranty or three years most people are gonna make it to 38,000 miles before they get to that three year mark. So you got about two years of trying to pay as much as you can off, pay that thing off before you got a ticking time bomb on your hand. And these manufacturers know it. You know, I used to spend a lot of time uh, with my little turbo CRX in, the, in pull apart in junkyards. And I used to see vehicles in the junkyard that weren't wrecked didn't have any front end, side swipe damage, rear end damage, didn't have hail damage, have all the body components get pulled into the junkyard. And you know what was wrong with them? Engines gave out. A lot of these little Chevy engines, they go out and they cost, like at one point of time, if you rebuild a transmission, all of the parts in a, in a, in a, uh, a 350 small block, a transmission, they were metal parts, very little plastic, if any. Now they got all these plastic and polyurethane parts in the transmission and to where the dealer, the dealer is the only one that can service them, you know? And you like, man, why would they make all this stuff out of plastic? Ask yourself the question. Well, if they built it rock solid, you know, they wouldn't make any money off services. When you look up how dealerships make money, they don't make money off the cars, they don't make a whole lot of money off that. They make it off selling parts and services. And they're gonna put them same 
raggedy ass OEM dealership parts that's mass produced somewhere uh, in China on your car to break again. Okay? Man, I want you to even think about even the warranty companies. The warranty companies that do extended warranties, a lot of them, they don't even put good parts on there. You know, you they warranty the workout, you take your vehicle to an AE sort of AC, uh, you take your vehicle to a ASE certified mechanic and you got a cheap extended warranty that wants your money more than they do to actually get your vehicle up and running good, man, th these companies will be sending a, uh, a ASC certified mechanic parts off of Amazon that are not reputable. And then when he puts it on your car and you make it two weeks down the road, you're like, man, I'm having that same problem. Guess who you come back and blame? You come back and blame the mechanic. You don't blame the company that, that gave him the cheap part to install. And if he don't install it, he's not going to get a payout. The goal is not quality. The goal is to make the wealthy richer, wealthier. I'm telling you, man, you, you need to do research. There's websites out there, and I'm just talking about vehicles because that's a very uh, uh, common one that I've, I've encountered recently. There's websites out there where you can uh, get a reliability, a reliability uh, grade on the drivetrain, on certain components, on the electrical components. For every manufacturer, like there's certain years, like this new Toyota Tundra has one of the worst reliability ratings uh, known to man. But there's years like the 2001, the 2000 Tundra, if you can find them, are bulletproof, running around 400,000 miles, uh, running like an ox. You know, uh, some of these little Ford Focuses, all of them pretty much have transmission issues. And it's well before, uh, it's going to happen right around the time the warranty runs out or a little bit after. You'll wonder why. Man, how is this vehicle that's two years old needing a new transmission? Because they put, they put, dog, imagine your transmission being built with Capri Sun plastic. The same little shiny plastic that they use to make Capri Sun. Imagine your doggone transmission being made out of crap like that. And these people is charging for vehicles charging five ten thousand dollars over msp msrp high interest rates and people are buying it i tell you man it, it would do you some good to find you like a old a old uh heavy chevy especially in a truck can't go wrong where you can go to the parts store get a distributor you can go get a uh you know uh a time and light and timing a lot of this stuff now they make it to where it's so technology based where the average person can't repair it. Or you need very expensive tools to even be able to repair it and diagnostic tools. Basic scan tool ain't gonna cut it on a lot of this new stuff. Their goal is not to uh, have you purchasing quality. Their goal is to keep you buying worthless stuff because it's always breaking down. Closer to y'all ministries, kicking it gun barrel straight. Bow.